Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're going to be talking about Skull. He's going to be releasing this Tuesday along with three other units whose reviews will be coming out tomorrow. Skull is, in many ways, a equivalency to Medina. He has quite a few different little quirks about him, and you might even say that he's a direct upgrade. However, I think they each kind of have their own little black mage niche corners, and they're both really good at what they do. Skull is Lightning Element Black Mage primary job. His secondary jobs are going to be Staff Mage and Time Mage. Already a little bit different than Medina, right? Where Medina has more evasive sub jobs. Skull is kind of going along the Kill Fae Mage route. Just a little bit. His primary weapon is going to be Rods and his armor is going to be Hat, Clothes, and Accessories. His TMR ability, the Thunder Gauntlet, is an accessory, has pretty good stats, critical rate 10, spirit 8. The ability is marginally good. I would say it consumes your own HP 20% with the trade-off of increasing an ally's magic by 80% for 3 turns. That's pretty good, and it would be foolish to underestimate it. However, with the kind of equivalence in power between this and Little Leela's TMR, I kind of see this as being the way going forward, and I think this TMR is not a must-have immediate level right now. Even if you had it though, even at level 1 with magic plus 50% to an ally, I would probably find a home for it on one of my units. His mastery ability does give increased magic 20% for self, along with a decreased activation time, of 200 for himself as well. Being a lightning element, he is going to be weak to earth element units, so that will include Kilfey. However, he does have some magic defense, and that will help him against Zombie Ryryu and against Kilfey. 20% magic resistance is pretty good. I think what it would do for Skull is it would stop him from dying in one hit from those units. Meanwhile, he does have 20% resistance to water, and he has the native defense to water as well. So he's going to be pretty tanky against Glacella and against Ildira. This being said as well, he does have a pierce weakness, but it's not going to completely disable him. His limit break is a 3 hit 200% modifier attack. The 3 hit is important here. This is one of the first magic abilities that can actually chain and has multi-hits. Magic does not chain though, the thunder element chains, so keep that in mind, and it will be relevant when the Siren Raid does come out. It has a 25% chance to paralyze. It feels a little low to me when you think about like Victora, who has a 67% chance to charm. There's also some other units like Ketone, whose stop ability is significantly more enhanced than 25% here. So I'm a little curious if it's like there's a 25% chance on every hit of his attack or if it's just overall. Because if it's overall, the paralysis effect is just a little bit weak to me. His base stats is going to be HP 2002, rank 37, attack 72, magic at 257, which puts him at the ninth strongest magic unit in the game. He gets an additional plus 38 along with his magic plus 20% from his mastery ability as well. So overall, his magic shouldn't be underestimated, and he is up there with all of the heavy hitters. His agility, when you're looking at his base stats, 53, seems pretty low. However, he does get agility 8, which really bumps him up there and makes him a moderately speedy unit. Dexterity at 168 and luck 139, putting him at 14th for each of those. His luck gets an additional 41, dex additional 30. He also gets a luck plus 20%. His luck isn't crazy. It's not terrible. Uh, when I was reading the reviews, people said he might have trouble hitting. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think he's just not going to be your god tier evasive character like Medina or like Little Leela. 
let's go ahead and talk about his support abilities and his counter abilities. His support abilities are pretty interesting and you can get away with equipping almost all of them depending on the situation. I would say you're probably going to find yourself leveling all of them and using them at one point or another, whether you're PvE or Arena. Primarily, you're probably gonna have magic up and defense up on him. However, there are situations if maybe you're sub time mage and you want his AI to haste where you're gonna put CT change invalid. You might also find situations where you want to equip high speed chanting. The decreases activation time 250 for him is pretty potent because he already has decreases activation time 200 on his mastery ability. That's almost a combined total of you know, almost casting spells twice as fast. And for spells like Flare, which have a CT generation of 200, that's gonna be a spell generation CT, right? It's actually going to push the cast time for Flare up another entire turn. And for those of you that know about how CT works and how CT spellcasting works, you know that breaking one of those breakpoints can be really important for taking your turn before the opponent. So for those of you that do a lot of live PvP and who really focus on hitting those agility breakpoints and spellcasting breakpoints, this is going to be one of those units where having this on him could be really powerful. And I actually wonder if you could even bump it up another tier if you used uh, Shell's TMR. I believe it's Shell's TMR that has decreases activation time. Now we're gonna get, now we're gonna go just on a full tangent in the middle of a character review because I have to know, I have to know if it's Shell's TMR that has ability recast reduction on it. So hold on guys, hold on. It doesn't, it has spirit penetration. All right, it's her mastery ability that has decreases activation time. Glad we took the moment there to uh, completely sidetrack. <laughs> in terms of his reaction abilities you're going to want to set magic counter or slow counter you could go anti-barrier but honestly he's not a defensive mage that's not the direction he's going if you're setting defense up level one you're really wanting him to just survive one hit anti-barrier is not going to save you for more than that one hit so i think you'll probably be fine just relying on magic counter or slow counter in terms of his primary abilities you're going to turn off bio and toad Focusing on Thunder, Thundaga, and Flare, particularly with his CT reduction, if you do set his CT reduction count, uh, passive ability, hello, <laughs> uh, it will run, it will hit a turn earlier, which will make his Flare very potent. Among all of his sub jobs, I think Black Mage is mostly his kind of not too exciting. You basically get Drain, you get Thundara, Asper, and Sleep. Nobody's gonna use those though, right? Staff Mage sub is probably his most versatile and is probably the sub job I see him being on the most. He does get the jump one, move one ability cast. He gets Thunder Rod. He also gets Confuse Rod. I could actually see uh, Thunder Rod being turned on here, but I think most of the time you're gonna turn all of these off. If you're anything like me with my Kill Fae though, you will leave Step and Magic on. You will leave Stun Wand on and you will leave Energy Buster on. Energy Buster of course being that kill faith technique that just obliterates everyone with 100% accuracy in front of you. I think those are gonna be his primary used abilities. And if I was subbing, if I was going to sub Staff Mage with him, I would probably turn Thunder and Thundaga off and just rely on his Staff Mage abilities. That would be me just because I have a feeling his AI for Staff Mage would function better if you do turn off Thunder and Thundaga. It's definitely something we'll be experimenting with. However, it just feels like in my gut that would be the right thing to do. For sub time mage, the, you're really not gonna be setting sub time mage probably except for maybe PVE content. Even then sub staff mage is probably better. You do get access to haste, you do get access to quicken. You're gonna be turning disable, uh, you're gonna be turning off swap positions and you're gonna be turning comet off. The reason you would turn comet off is you already have flare which is going to do a substantial amount of non-elemental magic damage and Comet is a non-elemental magic spell. So you already have Flare, significantly stronger. Just rely on your Flare. You're gonna get uh, Float as well. Float, you're just gonna turn off. Slow, definitely turn that off. I would say 
If he's casting slow instead of casting flare or one of his damaging abilities or quick, you have probably already lost the battle. So I would just take your chances and turn it off and pray that maybe he lands a critical hit flare and wins you the match. Quicken as well, always leave Quicken on because it is a very passive support ability and it is always gonna be the way to go if you are sub time mage. Overall for his cards, we have pretty much any magic card, any magic esper is gonna do the work and get you there. That would be Trousseau, Red Chocobo, Little Leela, Rama, Mobius, Mind Flare. Same with the espers. The only one not on the esper screen there is Diablos, which is funny because he's the strongest magic esper. <laughs> but any of those will do you fine. He's not a complicated unit. He's... I mean, you could even argue that Medina is a more complicated unit than him because you do have to have like evasion builds for Medina and you're like trying to figure out her AI so that she pops her LB with, like, I don't know, some buff on that's going to murder the opponents. You could probably not turn off any abilities with this guy, throw him in your party, and I think he would be just fine. Skull is going to be one of those units that nobody's going to be direly excited to pull but you're going to be excited on the day that you need him and i can tell you the days that you're going to need him are when the siren raid comes out and the next time we decide to climb tower and fucking siren is waiting for us on level 30. thank you so much everyone for watching my video if you do want to support me make sure you use my affiliate link dig.gs coins or go to dig.gs slash offer to get a special discount code for your Amazon coins. And of course, come say hi and chill with us in our Discord. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.